Hi, I'm Pamela Poole, and I live an amazing life as an artist and an author. Today I'm in the studio. Um, I really thought that the demo I did for creating this paper lantern uh, was going to be the one you'd be seeing today, but for some reason, the resolution didn't work out with a YouTube format. So I am actually going to do another one of these. I needed another example anyway. But to show you what I'm going to be working on today, this paper lantern was painted in watercolors with marker outlines. And the inside, I have a dowel. And I have a little lantern uh, light that you hang into the top. You pull the, this out. It shines and that hangs from the top of it. It looks, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks really good at night. Um, I'll post a picture. I just used what I had in the house, which was some of this ribbon, but actually I will probably get some streamers and everything. I've been asked to lead a workshop in making lanterns for a parade that we are going to have on the beach here in the area where I live. I have never been to a lantern parade and have never made a lantern. So this was my first. And as I said, that video didn't work out. So we're going to try this again. I want to show you just from the get-go what we'll be doing. I purchased the this brand of um, paper lanterns. You pop them open and you put metal in there. This is the top where you hang the light and I run the dowel through as I just showed you in the other one. Um, this surface is not meant for um, watercolor paint, but that is the beauty of watercolor paint. It's um, transparent and light will pass through this to show. And um, the the picture that you can paint on these is going to look much different with the light inside coming out than it does whenever you don't have that glow from within. And in fact, I'm um, hoping to use the theme of being a light in the world with this workshop. If you're doing a faith-based workshop, a uh, classroom setting for these, that's a really good thing because you can use the example that although um, the lantern is us and we can have the decorations on us, but without the light, we wouldn't even show up in the dark. But Jesus is the light of the world and he will be the light that comes into here and that displays the beauty of the lantern. He's the light within us. So. Let's get started. I want to show you some more things about this lantern workshop. If you want to paint along with me, you will need one of these, some sort of paper lantern in white. You will need some watercolors. Um, I even got some gold and silver out. I think it added a lot of beautiful shine to the fish. You will need to go ahead and order or plan ahead for some type of um, interior light to make the lantern glow and um, here's just I have a jar of some water some of my watercolors here that I thought I might use um, you can just use inexpensive brushes these um, have for several lanterns now these have worked out great for me uh, I used a just a flare uh, waterproof uh, I think it's permanent waterproof um, ink like a marker and this time, I, on the fish, I actually drew my um, design onto it with a pencil, water-soluble pencil. This time I'm going to use my um, watercolor pencils from like a couple of workshops ago, I think, a couple of classes ago, I did one with these. Um, you will need to, these are colors I expect to use, so I'm going to use those to draw, to draw the um, design on and I will be dipping these in water as I draw so that you can see them well. And the most important part is that you need some ideas. Um, the, for the first one, for the fish uh, lantern that I showed you, I just went online and drew out some 
designs. Uh, let's see, I've got fish, I've got a sea turtle, and I've got a seahorse. I used these two designs at the bottom of this for my fish, but I could have gone into something like a coloring book, and you can see these designs for some fish that could give you ideas. So if you color and you want to use designs from a coloring book, that's fine. Also, um, what I'm going to be doing in that line of thinking today is I have a scripture verse coloring book that I just use like for travel. If I want something to do in the car, I can color in this. I like this picture and this picture of that I colored of butterflies with the Romans 12:2 verse, do not be conformed with this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, what I did was just sort of print out uh, these designs so that I could show you what I'm going to draw onto it. But then I thought, well, this might be something that gives you an idea as well, because if you think that you're going to have a difficult time drawing on a round surface that's got these little ribs in it, go ahead and draw out your design and cut it out, and then put it here, outline it uh, either with marker. I use. I would rather use a pencil because... Uh, you can get into some trouble if you're using marker. You can't get rid of that once you put it on here. I think once I show you this, like let's say, uh, this one and then this one facing the same direction. What I'm trying to do is make sure I've got this on top. Make sure when you're drawing your design, this is the top. And then you can put your other elements, like if you want to do butterflies, you can put them on the sides, trace them out, and I think here I will do something like a sunflower, and the uh, butterflies will be facing the sunflowers. So if this helps you understand what I'm going to be doing when I draw these out, and then I'm going to paint them, and then have the flower in the middle, then that's something that might help you with planning out your design. You can just wing it. You can put just abstract paint blob designs. Anything goes with this. However, you will have some resistance because this surface, if you can see the shine in the video, I'm not sure what you're seeing, but on the camera, if you can see that there's a shine to this paper, this, um, if you're an artist and you've ever painted on a synthetic paper, like Yuppo or that new one, um, Art, Infinity or something like that, this resists watercolor paint. It's very different than if you were painting in a sketchbook like this or on a piece of professional watercolor paper. Um, in that case, the your paint becomes absorbed and becomes part of your picture. That's not what happens here. This is going to resist and in some cases, let me grab this one again. In some cases, it's never going to um, sit well. If you can see, I'll try to get this close to the camera. If you can see how rough this area is here, I had white spots that where paint wouldn't go for a while. Um, this, you can see how this is just layer upon layer. Here you've got some more upon layer of what I did on these. And anytime your paint is a little thicker, if you use something that's not as transparent with watercolor, like um, I do have this one shinier color. Um, it's got a little bit of a pearlescent in it. Well, that area, if you use that, is going to turn out differently when the light is behind it. It looks beautiful in this, this way. And I think it looks pretty with the light behind it, but you need to be aware that it's going to show up differently with light than it does just as a pretty decoration. All right, let me put this to the side and explain to you another way that I'm going to be working. This is not high tech at all. This is a Kleenex box. And if you are struggling with holding your lantern so that you can paint, 
you can put that in, rest it in a, a cutout in the Kleenex box or in a bowl and then work like this so that the lantern doesn't roll around every and everything. All right, I'm going to go work on getting my designs onto that lantern. If you want to paint along with me, this is your chance to pause the video and then come back um, whenever you are ready to paint your design as well. And you can see how I'm going to make simple watercolor paints, layer upon layer, stick onto a pretty parade balloon. All right, roughly I have a design on my lantern. I didn't do everything at once. I will just do one part at a time. Um, I did do some sort of watercolor erasing and you can kind of see how the paint doesn't stick very well. Let's see what happens if I use, now you got to keep your paint, uh, it, you know, you need it to be damp, but you also need to have, um, it needs to be pasty because if it, it's got, it's got to have some body to it. Um, you're going to see why in just a minute. Let me see if I can mix, what's that color? Okay, that's green. There's a blue, I'm trying to get a certain blue. Okay, there's a dark blue and there's a, a little bit lighter. Let's see what happens if I paint his little head here. <laughs> this is the butterfly's head. And I've got this a little bit too watery, but that works out fine because you'll be able to see how um, this paint sort of sits on the top of the water. It does not absorb down into the uh, lantern. It doesn't become part of the picture the way a piece of watercolor paper would. So if you're used to painting watercolor on a uh, cotton surface or even a uh, cellulose surface, some, some uh, inexpensive water papers are uh, a cellulose product. Um, still that will have some bit of being able to go down into the surface. With this, it's going to sit on top. Don't worry about it. We're going to fix it, okay? Um, this will never be totally right because it's on a seam. Anytime you have a seam, you're going to have a little bit different area to deal with. So this is what um, happens when you first get started. If it looks like something's running over the edge, just turn it a different way. Um, I'm going to try to do better about my consistency here. Um, I got to playing with too many colors and that's why I ended up with something too wet. Alright, I'm going to get this blue area in and while I'm working in a blue area, I'm just going to do all the blue areas and that way while my head is thinking about one particular color, I've got it. So um, let's get this in. And then I'll show you how I'm going to go to the uh, yellow and orange areas as well. Can you see how this is resisting and wrinkling a little more in the area where the seam is at? It's just, um, there's probably glue and that sort of thing in there. And it's just not going to be uh, like a watercolor picture that you paint on paper. It's still going to be pretty, so don't lose heart. Don't get discouraged. All right, I've got that little area going. This is starting to get a little bit more dry. You can see how uh, it almost becomes translucent whenever it's wet. Be very careful not to puncture through that when it's wet because it will be its weakest when it's wet. And it's okay if you're in a rush and you don't want to just work in a different area, you want to go ahead and dry a section, it's okay to use a hair dryer on this to get it dry quicker. And it will dry very quickly because, remember, it hasn't become part of the paper like with the uh, cotton papers. And we're going to do some shading. So don't worry if you're blending colors. I don't think mine is the same as this side. Don't worry about that. We're going to um, be adding a lot of layers to this. And actually, we're going to even go in and try to do some shading. And at the end of this, 
Um, I like to add the black outline with the marker just to make the design pop. Remember, this is going to be transparent when there's a glow coming from with, within it. And so um, the watercolor marker, or I mean the uh, permanent marker around the watercolor should help you to have more of a um, visual. These are going to be seen from a distance, and so that'll help people be able to see your design a lot more. Okay, so we've got the two end sections on the wings. I'm going to work on the inside and then I'll come back when I have that on to show you what's happening. All right, I finished the first color, the first layer on the butterfly. Remember, we're trying to use something similar to this design. I don't copy usually exactly any anything that I'm using, but this gave me an idea of something to go by to begin and honestly if your excuse for not making one of these lanterns or doing some other projects is that you can't find any inspiration you're going to have to find another excuse because there are coloring books galore and I'm going to show you one in just a minute that's going to be my inspiration for the flower we'll be doing. Uh, this is one layer I'm going to do another layer and then I'll probably show you how to start shading. Um, or you may be working along with me and doing your own thing. I'll put another butterfly here. Um, and remember, I mentioned that I wanted to do a flower. And um, the place that I'm going to get my idea for that is um, I've done the Psalms book like this. This is Proverbs, Inspire Proverbs. I had such a good time with the one with Psalms. These books have all the scripture of either Psalms or Proverbs in there. So what I did was use it similar to a devotional, and I would read the passage, and then I would go to uh, Bible commentaries online and look into the different teaching about them. And that's what I would use the lines for. I would journal in it. So it becomes like a devotional or a commentary, uh, almost like a little study Bible book for my family, for me to leave it to. And then in it, you have all sorts of pictures that highlight verses. I like some of the flowers down in this little section. So I'm going to be thinking about which ones I want to use. And that will be the flower that is attracting the butterflies on my lantern. So um, when I come back, we will have more um, going on with this, another layer and other things, so um, stick around. Let's see what we can do. All right, I have finished with both of the lanterns. I finished this one up with many layers um, of paint to get just the design that I wanted, the colors I wanted to make it as vibrant as I wanted it to be. I outlined these um, elements, butterflies, leaves, um, sunflowers, with black marker, and then I added some shine. These are about being aligned anyway. So I added some shine with gold and a uh, metallic blue paint that I have. And then I put the metal piece in, I mean the uh, wood dowel in with the metal piece um, in a certain way so that it would be secure. I'll put more about that in the um, blog if you want to go to my blog and see more details. And I finished up this time with ribbon streamers. Um, remember the first one that I did, I used a big bow. I'm using what I have and ribbon streamers are what I had that, with this one. So um, these are going to be beautiful with a light secured inside of them. And um, I'll try to enclose a picture into um, the end of the video or in the blog about what they look like at night with the lights that I got. They are special. They are for this type of lantern. and um, But I think that you could probably, if you were going to be in a parade type situation, you could probably use a... Um, I don't know, a, a small flashlight 
or something. As long as it doesn't make a spotlight on one spot and gives you a glow for the entire lantern, you should be good. And just keep in mind, for those of you of the Christian faith that want to do these for a uh, theme for Sunday school classroom setting, um, that this is um, a great topic for being a light, which is a biblical teaching, and that, um, you know, you can teach that Jesus is the light. He's the one from within that gives us the glow, and we are the lantern. So we are going to be the ones that are given the glow from within by Jesus. And so go out and be a light. Have fun in your studio. Don't take yourself so seriously with this project. It is going to be a challenge in some spots. Remember, the paper resists, but that's okay. You can overcome that. And I hope you enjoy these. I will um, see you next time. I've got another project in the wings waiting for me to work on. And so I will see you then. Until then, go be a light. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.